Don't forget to hit that like button if you enjoy our videos. So today we're going to look at PowerShell 6 and we're just going to quickly do an import into SQL. So if we haven't done an import into SQL before, I am sorry. Um, so we're extracting a zip file here which contains our CSV data. So what we're going to do is take the CSV data, import it into our variable, which in this case happens to be called data. Uh, we're just going to quickly check that everything has imported successfully. Uh, so we're going to look at the top two records just to get the idea of what the data looks like. And that all seems to have imported fine. So next up we're going to go ahead and we're going to import our data into SQL. Now we're going to use the write SQL table data um, uh, function and from that we're going to go ahead and just simply uh, insert the data. Now I'm also going to use the force switch because I don't actually have the database existing right now so it's going to go ahead and create the database in the background as well as well as the table which will hold the data. So there was no test table because there was no database. You get the idea. Now one of the things I wanted to cover here is why this would be fine but equally a bad idea at the same time. So if we go ahead and we just look at the table and our data that has been imported for a second, we should see our 500 rows from our CSV, which all looks fine, generally okay. This is kind of a negative thing and a good thing at the same time. The good thing is that we're able to create the table. The bad thing is that there's no calculation done as to the content that you're uploading. So it just takes some very general things and says, hey, I'm going to create max values for all of these. Now the downside to this is that ultimately that table is not going to be optimal for sizing and you're going to end up with a lot of let's say, performance issues further down the line. If on the other hand you're using it as just a hot table and your plan is to drop it afterwards, well this can be totally fine. So it does depend a little bit on use case. On the other hand, if you want a table to exist already or already exists, so here we're going to create a new table um, with less than max values and we're going to import our data there. So similar principle, uh, we're just going to change the table name here to table2 we're going to do the import and this is a more likely scenario in terms of how real world would work and for those of you who are paying attention you might actually see that it ran a little bit faster as well now admittedly probably because it didn't need to create the DB or the table because it already existed but as you can see now we have the same data structure is fine and according to best practices and consequently you will not be pissing off your DBA um, you have the smaller values so these aren't even the correct ones I mean I spent like five minutes creating this demo so I didn't even bother to fine-tune it beyond that but you get the idea it is generally a better practice now hopefully you enjoyed today's video, if you did you know what to do, if not you also know what to do and as always see you in the next one.